So around 13,000 BC, King Anu, who now was back on Nibiru, was advised by his scientists that next time their planet comes around to Earth, it will be a lot closer and will cause floods, etc. So he sent a messenger off to Enlil and Enki and told them that next time the planet comes around, which was in a probably about 3,000 years, it's going to... And that's 3,000 years from then, not not, not what I'm talking now. Um, it will flood, um, and their best bet is to actually get in their ships and leave orbit or stay in orbit and wait for the flood to subside and wait for their planet to pass and carry on. And this brings us up to the great deluge that's written in the Bibles, and I do actually believe it was real there was there's it's not just uh the bible that's wrote about it other texts around the world talked about this great flood enlil persuaded the rest of the anunnaki not to tell the humans about this impending flood and enki was actually against that and he denounced them and uh didn't didn't want anything to do with it but eventually he had to swear on it and um said he wouldn't tell the humans however uh, Inky went away and accidentally told the wall a wall apparently and someone was listening a human was listening and so then uh, so that's his way of getting out of uh, explaining it directly to a human so he didn't lie he just was telling it to a wall um, but anyway this human then found out and of course uh, the story goes that uh, Noah was informed of what was coming and Enki suggested to him that he needs to create some sort of device or raft or, or arc that would cover him uh, hermetically so it wouldn't leak. This is the Noah's Ark, or copy of it, supposedly, and it was round, which is goes against what we normally imagine it to be. But that's actually written in a tablet by the Babylonians. Now, it could have been actually Enki writing this, because over the years, as we know, um, the languages have changed. And it does actually talk about a round boat, etc. Now, this guy here... Um, is works for the British Museum, Ivan Finkel, and he says no such thing. This is this is all fake. That's ignore that. Nothing to see here. But <laughs> those of you that know me, he works. Let's have a look where he works. Ivan Finkel. He works for the British Museum, hmm, and he's interested in. Well, he's the main person, one of the main people from Mesopotamian scripts and languages. So whatever he says goes. Yes, British Museum actually is called the Rockefeller Museum, also known as. So anyone that knows me knows Rockefeller. So my last video was explaining how this person here is in charge of the Mesopotamian artefacts for linguistics and scripts, etc, etc. So as I mentioned before, if he says it's fake, um, this tablet that he's holding here, then yeah. But as I mentioned in the last video, Actually, the British Museum is also known as the Rockefeller Museum. So the Rockefellers, if you don't already know, they debunk everything to do with anything that's real. So as long as it's debunked by someone from Rockefellers, you can pretty much say it's pretty much real as opposed to being debunked. So going back to the Ark. Now, Enki asked Noah to put animals in there, the domesticated animals. He also said, can he look after the DNA of the animals that they've already got? So him, Enki, and his sister had collected DNA. So the idea was that after the flood, they would grab the DNA back off of Noah, um, so that at least the species will be able to continue. Another almost exclusive for you guys, Antarctica did actually have this kind of lush environment. And so this is, um, I get these information sent to me because I'm interested in this. Antarctica's breakthrough saying that they've now found evidence that it was actually an ancient forest. Now, if you go along with Admiral Byrd's suggestion that he actually saw green vegetation there, and we go along with the th fact that um, the military are there and supposedly there's an ancient alien spacecraft that was there that was probably dated back to when there was no ice in Antarctica. So this all now starts to make sense that really there was um, land there and that's possibly why there's also pyramids supposedly under ice. So if you start adding all of this together, um, everything that my videos are saying actually sounds kind of true. Da, da, da. 
you're probably wondering where the name Anunnaki come from. We didn't give it to them. It was actually given to them by King Anu. So at the time, this was uh, way before humans were even invented. This is literally just as they was about to start mining for gold in South Africa. So there was um, 600 people in South Africa, or 600 Anunnaki, South Africa, 300 in Mesopotamia, and there was another 300, I believe, in uh, on Mars. And King Anu did a simultaneous broadcast to all of these uh, Anunnaki and said to them, look, you guys are heroes. Um, we are now going to call you Anunnaki, those who heaven or those from space came to Earth. Um, so that's not the only time they've changed names. In fact, Enki wasn't actually called Enki. Enki was originally called um, Enwa, I think it was. So they like to change their names, but that's where the Anunnaki's name come from.